All right, here's an update. So what we've done so far, all new brake lines, all new calipers, pads, and rotors. Everything's blood out. I got fluid coming out clean, no spitting or anything like that, no air in the lines. Front or rear, all four corners, everything's blood out. And uh, still no brakes. You gotta pump the brakes up a few times to get it to stop. And when I was driving at home, there were no brakes really at all because that line was blown out and the master cylinder was empty. So I just did my best to stop and didn't think nothing of anything. But uh, if I started up and let it run and I pump the brakes up and hold it, it'll idle up and then it'll idle down and almost choke itself out so that tells me that what I gotta do not the master cylinder but I have to put a new brake booster in it back here brake booster's bad so it's it's got a it must have an air leak in the diaphragm inside of it and I'll have to replace it, otherwise we ain't going to have no brakes. So I'll have to take and undo my brake lines, that one and that one, pull the master cylinder off, it's only a couple bolts to hold the master cylinder on, and that wire, and then I got to go inside the car, climb up underneath here, and unbolt the dang thing. From the firewall, unbolt it from the brake pedal, and uh, probably, I'm sure, take the airbox out and who knows what else to try and fish it out of there. I've done brake boosters before, so it's nothing I haven't done before. It's just I don't want to do it. I wasn't expecting to have to. So it is what it is, but there's an update on what's going on with the car. It's drivable the way it is right now. I mean, I could drive it, but if you plan on stopping, you want to plan on stopping ahead of when you're going to need to stop. So that's that. I'm going to get off of here, start tearing stuff apart. So here we are didn't have to take the master cylinder lines off because uh, I used copper I was able to fish it out of there and move it out of the way I got my vacuum line out um, supposed to take it off of this here elbow but it was a lot easier just to pull it out right now if I need to change it I'll do that later when I put the new one in but it's out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the car now and see what I got to tear apart to get to that. So basically all there was was master cylinder just slides over those two studs. A nut on one stud, nut on the other. And then this wiring harness went over the top on the outside and another nut went over to hold that on out of in its place so I'm gonna go in the car now and see what uh, what the heck I gotta do now so if you got an automatic you don't have a clutch reservoir here for your fluid um, that goes there I gotta try and fish it out of the way and then I gotta move I already unplugged this one here from the wiring harness um, I gotta undo that one yet move the wiring harness out of the way some and then hopefully I can fish the dang thing out of here I really don't even know if it won't come out of this hole I'm gonna have to take and undo the fuel rail and move the fuel rail out of here and that would entail a bolt there well, nuts on a stud anyways. 
And then, oh, let's see here. I haven't even really looked at it yet. One there. And then I have to undo it at the rail right here and right here. So those two. And then probably this hose has got to come off that. And then should I'll take this whole thing. I guess I'd have to unbolt or unplug that. And probably undo the throttle and uh, uh, cruise control cable. And get that bracket out of there and just flop this whole entire thing over here out of the way and pull it out of that hole. It looks like the only way it's really going to come out. But I'm trying the least work alternative first. So I'll see if I can get it out of here. If I can't, i got to go that route. It is what it is. There it is. So you're supposed to be able to take what I noticed here. Just pull your fuse box out. It should just slide right out. There. On this side there's a slide just like the other side. Well, mine's all rotten. And I can't slide it out of there so I ended up having to take and Take this motor pulling bracket off where you put your chain to pull the motor. Get that bracket off. Moved all these wires over. Did have to take the fuel injection off, the fuel injection rail. And got that out of my way. And a little jerk is out of there. Holy cow. I had to fight it out. I don't know, even know how I'm going to get the new one in there. Well, I'm gonna. So, yeah, there it is. There it is. Booster is out. Well, there's the new master, or not master cylinder, brake booster. So, now we can see if we can put it back in there. I don't know. It's gonna be tough. It's tough getting it out. And I think it's going to be tough going in. But once it's in, it should be smooth sailing. Well, I just buttoned everything back up again. No extra parts left behind. I haven't started it and tested anything yet, so... That's what we're going to do. I still got to put the panels in down here, but I'm not doing that until I know I guess I'm going to have to take it down the road and see what it does. Well, you ain't going to believe it. Still no brakes. So, we did get rid of one problem though, the vacuum leak problem. Because now, with the car off, I can take and pump up the brake pedal and it gets hard. And it stays hard until you turn it back on. But, there's still no brake pressure, so the master cylinder is bad. Yippee. That'll be easy. But that requires another trip to the auto parts store, and I'm tired of going there because of the stupid coronavirus. I don't like buying my parts off of the internet like that because you just don't know what you're going to get, and you can't send it back. The easiest when you do get the wrong part or a faulty one. So. Hoo hoo. I guess uh, I'm going to put this video together and y'all can watch it. We got the new master cylinder. We're going to bench bleed it right now. Came with these lines. I got it filled up with brake fluid. 
and you want the lines, you want it filled up enough to where you can put the lines underneath the fluid. So as you're pumping it right here, it pushes the fluid into there. And you can't suck no air or nothing back into the system. So here goes nothing. This might take just a little bit to do too. The old one, I tried bench bleeding the old one and there was no pressure at all whatsoever. You could see all the bubbles in the line here. You want to pump this until all the bubbles are gone. Got a little bubbles coming up here. And you just keep pumping it until all the bubbles disappear in there and then you should be good to go to put it all back together. Damn car is turning into a nightmare. So we got new master cylinder, new booster, all new brake lines, new pads, rotors, and calipers. Everything's blood out. We have brakes now. So it took us for a test drive last night, mile up the road, went to downshift, started acting funky. Drove it back, got in my driveway, and the freaking slave cylinder for the clutch, not the slave, the clutch master cylinder, went out in it. It's got a brand new slave cylinder already. Brand new clutch. Whole clutch kit, that's all new, but the freaking master cylinder went out and that would be part of your reservoir all the way down to I don't know if you can see it see that bleeder right there it's all part of it so the lines run all the way up to the firewall to your clutch pedal and up there to that reservoir so basically I can't put it in gear right now at all. There's no pressure to push in the clutch. Um, yeah, this car is ticking me off. As you would say, Paul, time to get a bigger hammer. And the hammer I want to use ain't got a handle on it. But that would be a big hammer. That would do the job. Sheesh, I walked away for a second and look at this. Goofies. So anyways. Oh, I think I'm going to take the air box out again. And that. And I don't even know what else yet. We'll find out when I get to it but hopefully it'll fish out pretty easily um, I might as well get a job at GM it's the way I feel right now because I could about tear anything apart and put anything together on this vehicle by now in my opinion alrighty thanks for watching Well, I fished it out. I had to break the tabs. You can see there, that one, and that one. I'll bend them back, but yeah, there was no way I could get this guy out of here. 
I don't know what the heck. There's this thing here on the bottom here. You're supposed to be able to push in. Well, I couldn't push that sucker in to get it out of there for my life to depend on it. It was rusted in here too, but I didn't have to take anything apart inside the car. You can kind of see right there, there's a stud and there's a bolt that went in that side and that's what holds the clutch master cylinder in and then like I said it ran over to right here where it goes into the side of the transmission and all that held that on was that silver clip right there and Here it is out of the car. This would be the end that went into the transmission. And then here's the culprit right here. You can see that the plunger is stuck in and every time you push that in it should just push right back out flush with the edge of this and it won't do that. So. That leads me to believe what I figured it was to begin with is that this master cylinder is bad and it must have a hydraulic leak internally. So I'm going to take my reservoir off. I'm going to take it off of that line and see if I can get it to come back flush. I'm going to push it in one more time and see what I can do. I tried bleeding it while it was on the car yet right after it happened with that bleeder there and it didn't change anything it would work one time and then it would hang up again so alrighty